Hey there guys, your boy Virtus here and welcome back to the Unreal Engine 4 survival horror game series. And in today's video, we are going to be working on an end game screen for when the player runs out of their hunger bar. So basically when the hunger bar gets down to zero, you know, they haven't got enough food and all that kind of stuff, it's going to show this cool vignette effect on the screen with a little button that will, you know, let them restart the level, go back to the menu and that kind of stuff. And it's also obviously going to tell the player that they have died, they've run out of hunger and that kind of stuff as well. So we've got lots to cover we've got to go over importing the graphics from Photoshop, we've got to go over, you know, putting it into the UI element, and lastly, we're going to be doing all the script as well for when the player dies, you know, pausing the game and that kind of stuff, and then bringing it onto the screen, setting up the buttons and all of that. There's lots, lots to work on, so let's just go ahead and dive in and get started. Okay, so this is what the, you know, the end game screen is going to look like. It's a very, very, uh, very, it's a very rough version for now. You know, I've got this little red vignette effect around the screen. I've got this piece of text here that says you died, better find some food next time. And a simple little button that says return to menu. And this is just going to be displayed on top of the screen. Now, before we can sort of bring any of this together, we do need to bring it out of Photoshop and put it into the engine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend a couple of minutes here just, just to quickly export all of these graphics out into like images that we can import into the engine and then we'll import them in and put them into a widget and all of that good stuff. So there's only really two things that we need to take out of this. The first one is going to be the vignette and the second one is going to be the button. The reason why we're not going to be exporting the text out is because we can create all of that in UMG anyway so we don't really need to do anything with that. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to get a layer which is essentially just the vignette effect. So I'm just going to go ahead and create a new document and I'm just going to use the width and the height 1080 which you know vignette effect is and I'm just going to go ahead and move that over. Now keep in mind guys if you guys don't want to do all of this the link will be in the description for the latest version of you know these graphics and it should all be exported out and ready to go for you. So I'm just quickly moving this over in here, uh, just ready to get it out. So with the layer select, just got to line that up. And once again, let's see if we can do that. There you are, line that up. That's just fine. And I'm going to go ahead and delete the background layer. And I'm going to make sure I save this as a PNG so that it actually allows for transparency. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm just going to scroll down to the bottom, name it anything you like. For me, I'm going to call this red vignette. And boom. So I'm going to leave that as it is. I'm going to leave the Photoshop and the button for now. And I'm going to get into the Unreal Engine side of things. So I'm going to go into my textures folder and I'm going to quickly import that graphic. So I'm just going to quickly grab my file explorer here, get the red, red vignette effect and just drag and drop it just to import it just like that and we should sort of have this red texture going on now it should look a little bit weird like completely red because it doesn't really take the transparency transparency into consideration for our sort of thumbnail here so next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to go into my blueprint section and i'm going to create a ui widget so go to your user interface and widget blueprint name it whatever you want i'm just going to call this end screen and I am going to open that up and let's go ahead and chuck that image in there. So just give that a couple of seconds to load. And once again, we're going to go to common, grab an image in. And then under image over here, we are just going to type in red vignette. Click it and grab it just like that. And you can see we've got it in our viewport. So what we need to do now then is we actually need to scale this over the whole screen. Just make sure you go all the way out to the edges. Uh, easiest way to do this probably is to just type in size X and Y is you know 1920 by 1080 and then just set the position to 0 and 0 and that should perfectly center it for us. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use the anchors to anchor it to the whole screen so it doesn't go moving about if you know the player is not using a 1080p. 1080 screen or anything like that. So hopefully this should be looking all good. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and drag in the text. And in here I'm going to type in, you died, better find some food next time. Cool. And I'm just going to go ahead and scale this as well. And under font, I am um, under font. I'm going to make sure I change that to Feast of Flesh to get this sort of survival look we've got going on. Justification is going to be centered. And there we are. So that is all good. And there is one last thing that I wanted to do as well, which was just to make sure this is all wrapped. Just press size to content. 
Uh, I should probably also type this incorrectly as well. You died. I've got to make sure I put that in there. There you are. That's all good. Cool. So, you died. Better find food next time. That's fine. And I'm just going to leave it here. And I'm also going to scale it up as well a little bit. Just so it's nice and big, nice and clear, so the player knows exactly why they died. So, I'm going to change the font size on that to 40. And I'm just going to stretch out this little bit here as well. And I'm going to change the font color as well. So I'm going to go to color and opacity and just chuck this into like this sort of color that we've got here. And one last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to anchor that to the center of the screen just so it doesn't go flying about, doesn't end at the bottom, the top. You know, it looks quite nice at the top there. So we are going to leave it exactly as it is. So I'm going to go ahead and compile that and I'm going to save that as well. Once we've done that, we can work on the back end stuff, which is actually hooking up our dev system to play this, uh, you know, put this user interface element on there. So as of right now, when the player does die, all that's going to happen is the game gets paused and that is it. So we're pretty much going to be taking on from that functionality. We're going to be keeping the pause bit because, you know, it stops the entire game, which is great. And we're just going to tell it to create that widget and display it on the screen. And then from there, we're just going to tell it to display the mouse, let the player press the button and then and return to the menu level which we're going to be creating a little bit later on in the series maybe a couple of videos from now so what I need to do then is I need to open up my third person character where we actually have our hunger system and I'm gonna try and find the hunger stuff it's been a real while since I've, pl I've played around with any of this so it may take me a couple of moments just to find it so we've got event tick here and it's just taking away you know, hunger from the player, which is great. And then hopefully there should be some conditioning somewhere, which just checks to see whether or not the player's hunger is, you know, above zero. So I just got to quickly find that and then we can sort of move things on from there. So branch, uh, there you are. So false. So is player hunger less than one? If it's true, you died, set game pause. That's perfect. So what I need to do from here is pretty much drag that out and type in create widget, go to class and just add in your end screen that you just created and from return value over here just add uh, just press just type in add to viewport add that in and hopefully our red vignette effect should be displayed on the screen when the player dies so uh, you don't need to do it okay so we're just gonna go ahead and leave this as it is for now we haven't really made any changes to it so it shouldn't really affect anything and I'm gonna go ahead and press play and just see what happens when the player actually dies now. So I'm just going to run around for the sake of things at the moment and just sort of see how it goes. So I'm just going to go ahead and collect the word because, you know, I can. And you can see our hunger bar in the top left hand corner just getting lower and lower every second that I keep on playing. So I've got my three pieces of wood. Let's walk around here and let's try and light the fire before we die. So keep on going. There you are, that's the fire lit, that's one objective. Cool, almost dead, almost dead. There you are, you died, better find some food next time. That is perfect. So there is a few changes that we can make to this to make it look a little bit better. For example, we could put like a shadow on the text and we could also make the vignette effect sort of fade in rather than being bam, straight on the screen. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna quickly create a basic animation, just a fade in animation to make the vignette fade onto the screen. So once again, we are gonna open up our end game, end game, sorry, end screen widget. And we're just going to set the default opacity alpha mask to zero on here. And once we've done that, we're going to do the same thing for the text as well. So alpha, set that down to zero so it's not on the screen by default. Create a new animation. I'm going to call this def. And from here, go ahead and add a couple of objects. So just the text block and the image. And we need to do the same thing on both of these. Just set up a color and opacity track. So just like that, scale these out so you can actually get to the values. Just go ahead and click to make sure you got them on zero for now. After maybe about a second, I'm going to have it start to fade on. Um, actually, no, not half a second. Okay, let's, let's go with half a second instead. So from here, I'm going to set it to zero. That's fine. Do the same thing down here as well. And over the course of about a second, I am going to have it fade onto the screen. So I'm going to change this to one and one just like that and if we go ahead and drag this back 
press play, you can see this is a little bit better now. It doesn't look too bad. So our animation is all set up in uh, down here. We just need to tell it to play now. So the way we're going to do that is event construct. We are going to just type in play animation. And we are just going to get a reference to, de to def. Just drag it in and just chuck that into the in animation and that should all work for us. Next thing that I'm going to do then is I'm going to go to my designer and I'm just going to go ahead and add a sort of shadow to this as well just to make it a little bit clearer on our screen. So I'm going to go ahead and add the shadow so I'm going to just pretty much turn up the offset if we have one already. No, we don't. So I'm going to leave that to one. So it's shadow color I need to work with. Turn the opacity up to one and you can sort of begin to see it here. And then you can just begin to play with the offset and you can see it there. So that's all looking good. I'm going to move it down just a little bit as well. And there you are. We've got a nice little bit of text here. So I'm going to go ahead and press play on this again to see how it looks. And hopefully we should have quite a nice looking end game screen here now. So pretty much if this works, all we need to do is pretty much just add that little button in that lets the player go back to the menu. Now, for now, I'm just going to be adding in the button. I'm not going to be adding the functionality because we don't have the menu system set up already. So that's going to be something that we're going to be going over in the next few videos. We're going to be going over step by step how to set up the menu in Photoshop, bring it into the engine, set up all the pages and all of that cool stuff as well. So the player is about to die. There you are. You died. Better find some food next time. That is perfect. So next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into my Photoshop document. Now, keep in mind, guys, you know, if you have got the button images and the vignette images, you don't have to do any Photoshop stuff at all. So what I'm going to do then is with my survival HUD uh, file open, I am just going to chuck this in here. And I'm going to try and get this image out. So I've got two images for the button, one for clicked and, you know, one for just the normal state. So this is how it's going to look normally. And when the player is hovering over it, it's going to have this cool glow effect on it as well. So what I'm going to do then is with this layer selected, I am going to go ahead and just get a selection around it to copy it. I'm going to create a new layer or a new document in Photoshop and I'm just going to pretty much export this out just in the same way we did with the vignette. So create a new document with that resolution that you want. So I am going to see if we've got the clipboard size on here, which it doesn't. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly have to read this. So we've got it in centimeters there at the moment, which doesn't help. So it's 14 centimeters by three centimeters that we're going to go for. So let's go ahead and do that again. So new document, change pixels to centimeters. And if I remember, it's 14 by three and that's perfect. And what we're going to do from here is just drag this out, get that layer and just drag it in just like that. Perfect. And I'm also going to have to make sure I get that text layer as well in here. There you are. And let's just center this properly. And hopefully it should be all good. There you are. That's perfect. Delete that background layer. Get that return to menu text in there. It's cool. So now I've just got to export out with two versions of this button. The first one, which is the normal state. So I'm going to go ahead and save this once again as a PNG because I don't want any extra bits on there. And I'm just going to call this button normal. And the second one, I'm just going to turn my inner glow on, you know, the little blending effect that I've got. And I'm going to call this button hover. And that's perfect. And now once again, we've just got to go ahead and go to our textures folder and import those into the engine. So find your two button images, button hover, but button normal, drag those in there. And from here, let's go back into our blueprint. So go ahead and find that. So blueprints, end screen, and we are just going to add in a button. Nice big one over here. And as for style, what we need to do is we need to set up the normal style. So set an image for that. And we're going to call this button. Well, we're going to look for button normal anyway. And that is our normal image. And then we're just going to drag this out to the size that we're after, just like this. There you are. That is looking good. Cool. So return to menu. It could probably look a little bit better than that, but there we go. That was fine. Next thing we need to do with that selected, go to our hovered effect and just go ahead and type in 
button and this time we're going to use the image for hover so you know it's sort of got that glow to it as well and as for the pressed image we are going to make sure that is the normal one as well so just type in button find button normal and there we are we are all good to go so we've got a button on the screen here we can add up all the functionality for that later on but for now let's just go ahead and try this out one last time make sure we've got everything on the screen and then hopefully we'll be in a good place to end the video so I'm just gonna run around a little bit more and just wait for this button and everything to pop up on the screen so just give that a second player should be dying any time now come on yeah this is one of the main issues with debugging you sort of have to wait out each time you know you want to make a change especially if you want to see when you die it's a bit of a pain but there you are and you can see we've got a vignette on the screen it says you died better find some food next time I can see the button isn't centered so let's go ahead and make sure we've got that just open up your end screen blueprint once again and just go to anchors anchor it to the center of the screen and we should be pretty much all good to go so there is a, one last thing that I do want to try and do is which is pretty much just get the cursor showing on the screen so I'm just going to quickly cast to third person character and I am set mouse cursor show mouse cursor okay you know I'm not even gonna bother doing that at the moment to show the mouse on the screen we will do that once we actually set up the functionality for the menus and everything but anyway we've got a really cool looking button on our screen we got the death effect and all of that kind of stuff so I am gonna end off the video here make sure you guys check out the next few videos where we're gonna gonna be going over uh, setting up the menus and yeah so as always guys make sure you share the video smack that like button and as always keep